What's up guys? Welcome back to another video everyone and today we are getting a rare opportunity to interview the one, the only, CWA aka Clash with Ash, the face of the Clash Royale community. I was going to have an introduction for Ash but you guys already know who he is. Without further ado, welcome to the channel. Ash, how are you doing today? Surfing boy! It's a pleasure to be here, man. Thanks for having me and uh, you're way too kind with the intro. But uh, excited <laughs> to be on, man. Thank you so much. First off, happy birthday. And thank you for taking the time out of your birthday you. to be here with me. It's crazy. There's no place I'd rather be <laughs> on my birthday than your YouTube channel, man. So, so thanks for having me, man. And thank you. Appreciate it. Also, congratulations on your newborn. Well, I guess not so new thank anymore, you. but can't wait to see. Yeah, it. he's just over a month old now. It's crazy. Yeah, time he's doing. Uh, he's doing well. Thank you. <laughs> it does. All right, guys. So we're gonna get straight into this interview right now. We're gonna start off with a pretty simple, easy question. We'll see what you think about it. Royal Giants or E Barbs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, man. Ah. Uh... Hard hitting questions right off the bat, man. Uh, no, I'll say uh, interesting. I, I guess I. So I'm not a big hater of those cards, even though it will uh, because because I'm a dirty gemmer and I don't run into them that often. So it's not that big of a deal when I do, right? So, but I don't. I also don't play either of the cards, so I don't have like strong uh, strong feelings. But I'm gonna have to go with. Royal Giant, I guess. I think that he's just a more interesting card. Uh, if he was fixed on ladder, I think that he could just be buffed maybe uh, for tournament level standard and he'd actually be kind of a, a cool kind of troop siege unit hybrid. I'm with you on that one. I actually do like the Royal Giant better myself as well. And that's an interesting idea you have to buff him for tournaments. That, <laughs> that's a good idea, actually. Didn't think yeah, about I mean, him in well, that way. I, I know a lot that, of people think he's overpowered, but... In reality, I think he's actually a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, he's only overpowered. He's only overpowered because he's overleveled. He's right. a common card, and he's a nuisance on ladder. So, like, I'm not saying he should be buffed right now because that would make the situation much worse. But <laughs> if he yeah. was converted, to, if he was converted to a rare card, and then buffed, I think it might be better for everybody. But you know, I, yeah, that. Uh, I think elite barbarians, though. I think that they're just you know. They're not too interesting, you know. They have no special mechanics. You just they're just spammy type cards. Right. They're actually a lot easier to deal with now with all the new cards they're introducing, like the Mega Knight and stuff like that. I found out. Yeah. All right. So we're. Yeah, I don't have. Yeah, yeah. They're not too bad to deal with right now. Yep. All right. So let's get into a couple of like real questions here. So, for, what inspired you to start your YouTube channel? Uh, I started my YouTube channel just, you know, very a very uninspiring way. Basically, just doing it for my clan and Clash of Clans uh, to cover a special event that we did. We kind of split the clan into two groups, and we went head to head. So, uh, yeah, that was it. I wanted to cover that event, and we didn't have like a YouTuber in our clan at the time. It was back in uh, late. 2014 so it was quite a while ago and i just kind of downloaded blue stacks and uh kind of threw up the, the lowest quality video humanly possible <laughs> <laughs> hey that's how we all started there pretty much the right lowest quality <laughs> um yep. this actually wasn't one of my questions but i just thought of it now did your youtube channel blow out like did it blow up immediately or did it just snowball effect over time Oh my god, man. I was the slowest growing YouTube channel in the history of the world. I felt like at least, <laughs> especially seeing some people like explode nowadays. It's just like, ah, oh, back in my day, you know? But it took me it took me quite a while. I think I it took me a year to reach 10,000 subscribers. Uh, and oh, wow. even it took me it took me like 6 months to reach uh, something like 1,000. Like it, my initially it was anemic uh, pace of growth. So, yeah, I, I uploaded for a few months with only getting maybe, you know, uh, 10 to 100 views per video. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. And everyone that slow. does YouTube, you know that it could be, like, pretty demoralizing. You put in all that work for that little amount of, like, um, publicity, I guess. But I'm glad you stuck with it because look where you're Thanks, at man. now. <laughs> Thanks, man. It, it, it wasn't, honestly, it wasn't demoralizing for me at the time. It was just, like, I guess my standards were so incredibly low that... Even if I was getting 50 people watching, I was like, wow, 50 people are watching my video. You know, it's, it's kind of surreal to yeah. me. Uh, so that it wasn't crazy. that bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that actually reminds me of a quote that I heard before that, um, expect the least but hope for the best. 
when you're <laughs> that's, going it's into a very like very wise quote yeah all right so what do you see in the future of clash royale as of now well i think we're at an interesting point in clash royale right now i think that they're definitely uh, the Supercell developer team is certainly invested in going the eSport route, which is really interesting to me because that's the type of content that I cover. Uh, but at the same time, it's going to be it's going to really depend on what comes after CCGS in terms of in terms of what 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 direction do they want to take this game uh, in the competitive scene. So I think that there is going to be big stuff on the way on that end. Uh, obviously, a million dollar tournament in uh, in London in November is going to be huge in its own right. Mm -hmm. So I think that if they can build off that momentum into something really cool for season two into 2018, I think that will be. Uh, set the table really nicely for a, a really viable, healthy eSport ecosystem in Clash Royale. Uh, as far as the game, more generally speaking, I think there, this last update really spoke volumes that they're really trying to engage and, uh, and keep the, the casual player, uh, the more casual player invested in the game. So I think they're trying to do, trying to both walk both the sides of the the fence there just make sure they try to keep the casual player interested and at the same time hopefully next update will be geared more towards uh a little bit more the competitive side of things right i definitely agree with that there is a huge like call for the esports right now and if supercell doesn't close on that deal then i don't know but they're a smart company <laughs> i think there's a huge yeah. future in clash royale for esports so. Yeah, and they're they're always really they don't want to they don't want to go all in on on competitive and, unless they have that big foundation that nice base of uh, of casual players because in a way the casual players feed the competitive scene giving them the notoriety the attention and and uh, and allowing them to do these big tournaments because they have such a strong foundation of of more casual players uh, so I think that it's a smart way of doing things. Yeah, I definitely agree. While we're talking about the future of Clash Royale, do you personally have any ideas for cards for the future? Well, I've always wanted to see like a, a Paladin card, like a, any card that has like a heal effect when it swings. Uh, so I'd like to see a, a Paladin card. I'd really be interested. Now, this is this might be an awful idea, but I've been kind of thinking about what if there was a card that had like almost, almost an a very small effect on the game, but it costs zero elixir. So a zero elixir card, basically a cycle card. So it could be like reveal your opponent's hand or something like that, like very small benefit. Uh, and, it, and it reveals their hand for like one second or something like that. Or, you know, it, it, just anything that that has a zero this intrigues me and of course like the more typical uh, request would be a uh, legendary building i'm curious to see if they it seems like the team is stepping away from going in the direction of adding any buildings to the game the last building that they added to the game was the furnace and that was a long time ago uh so mm -hmm. my gut says we might not ever see a legendary building I at least in the next few the next year or so, but uh, I'd like to see one. I'd like to see what they could come up with if they did. Uh, what about you? Do you have any great card ideas? Um, I actually have been working on this one update, uh, or not update, a uh, one card idea that I am actually posting tomorrow, which by the time this interview's out is probably a couple days ago, but <laughs> I don't want to give anything too much on that, but I will tell another idea that I actually had. Well, you can, actually wait, wait, you can tell else, so. because, you, because we're in the future already. You can tell me. Oh, that's right. So what it is, <laughs> it is called the um, hit. Wait, let me let me check check out the exact word I called it. Um, it is called the uh, hypno spell. So what it is, like you drop it on enemy units, and it's kind of like the size of a heal spell. And what it does, it hypnotizes the enemy troops to fight for your side against them, and they have like an HP of two shots from any tower or enemy units. So just two shots of anything will take them out. And ah, if that's cool. They, um, that would be cool. And another idea besides other than them taking out, like if they weren't going to go that route, two shots and then they turn back and they're back on the enemy side team. Ooh, I think I like sense. that one. That, I like that one better, maybe. I don't know. But it, <laughs> I, love the, I love the concept, though. What, what would your rarity and cost be? Any idea? I put it as a legendary card 
and I put it mm-hmm. at five elixir, and obviously I'm not. Yeah, that sounds like, reasonable. A creator. For it, the that's team, a lot of value. But, <laughs> yeah. But it is very small, and it only lasts one second. So whatever troop is there right when it drops, that's it. It's not like anyone can walk into it and stuff like that. So it wouldn't yeah. be too OP. That's cool, man. I like it. Yep, and then I put some cool Photoshop into it, so it should look pretty cool. <laughs> Sweet. And I'll then have to check that out. Another, yeah, another idea that I had for cards, which is actually submitted by a uh, subscriber, like that uh, that last card I was just talking about, I made that myself. But a subscriber said that that'd be cool to have a card where you, I don't know how much elixir it would be, but you play that card and it locks one card in the enemy's hand for one whole cycle. They cannot use that card for an entire cycle of their deck. Interesting. That'd be pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a pretty cool one, but so some decks are really reliant on one card, and that would be really crazy. But I guess if it would be randomized, it wouldn't be too OP. But yeah. There's definitely really a lot cool, of... Man. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of room for new cards in the game, for sure. Um, I totally agree. I think that it's... Yeah. Uh, it's it, always interesting to see how much one different card can change the whole game, like when they introduce, like, minor to the game like it, it opened mm-hmm. up a whole new you know not e- even without the card being necessarily like op it just opened up a whole new archetype of play style you know so i like cards like that yeah um what are your opinions on the current state of brawl stars uh so i'm not playing a ton of brawl stars right now because i can't make a ton of brawl stars content i'm sure you can kind of relate i know that you make brawl mm-hmm. stars videos but you make more clash royale kind of like me and it's just like it, it just the, seeing that most of my audience can't play, it just feels like why invest a ton of time right now as a content creator into the game. However, the game itself I actually really enjoy. I think it's a a fun game to play. So I think with Brawl Stars coming out, hopefully in the next few months, I don't know, but hopefully, uh, and then Arena of Valor coming as well, which is another game I'm really excited about. I think yeah. that I'll have a. I'll definitely be covering one of those on a, on a frequent basis soon. Yeah, I was actually just talking with Nigerian Nemesis, and you brought up a good point of the game where it's kind of hard to create content for, and what we see it as is like a purely live streaming game. That would be a really fun game to live stream and like interact with your fans and stuff like that, rather than maybe posting Absolutely. content on Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and you could even play with your friend, play pay, play with your viewers because you could just share the room code. It's like it's really cool and it opens up all kinds of right. fun possibilities. But I agree with you; it's really stream friendly. Yeah. It is for sure. Um, what's your middle name? <laughs> My middle name is Patrick. Patrick, that's, that's your yours. middle name. My middle name is it Aaron. Is. Timothy. Timothy Patrick Evans is my name. Wait, say that again. <laughs> Timothy Sorry, Patrick out. Evans. All right. That brings me to another question, actually. So I was reading through your Patreon like a week ago, and on it it says, my name is Tim, also known as Ash. How did you get the name Ash? Yes, yeah, so way back in the day, before most of your viewers were probably born, I played <laughs> a game called EverQuest, and it was a it's an MMO that you play on, on PC, and I just had the computer randomly roll me a name, just uh, randomly generated, and it was Ash Lane, uh, A-S-H-L-A-I-N. So ever since then, in like 1997, I just stuck with the name as my gamer name, and then even in Clash of Clans, my name was my name is Ashlane. And then when I started a YouTube channel, I wasn't gonna be like Clash with Ashlane, so I just sh- I just shortened it to Ash, <laughs> and that's that's basically that's it. It's not 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 that, not that interesting really of a story, story, but yeah, yeah. I guess it that, that is pretty interesting. It's yeah, crazy how something it. just like computer generated like completely changed your future. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, it, it is, right? Yeah, I guess when you look at it that way, it is. Yeah. All right, so next question, another kind of troll question. Tesla or Bomb Tower? Oh, Tesla for sure, after the buff especially. I think that Tesla's <laughs> yeah. actually Yeah, well, I wrote that though. question before the buff, so. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, nice yeah, softball Tesla's a lot better. Me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, what like, do you think? Yeah, I feel like, yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, who do you think is the biggest up-and-coming Clash Royale YouTuber as of right now in 2017? Besides yourself? Besides yourself? <laughs> <laughs> you there? Yeah, besides yourself? And not myself, Can you obviously. not hear me? <laughs> yes. All right, so... 
yeah, so obviously I love I love watching uh, content creators and Clash Royale. I try to stay up to date with all of them, and I think that ultimately it's it's so impossible to pick one, you know. Like, and I hate to cop out of the question, but it's like choosing your favorite child. I'm friends with so many content creators and so many <laughs> people. That's true. They ever. Everybody has their own like their own flavor, their own flair, uh, their own unique uh, perspective that they bring to the table and energy. So it's right. you know it'd be tough to, to say oh this person's the next up and comer. As far as just like pure growth, uh, you know no one's had the success that like Surgical Goblins had on YouTube, uh, yes. going from yes. absolutely you know a, a nobody and then to basically one of the biggest channels and in, in certainly English speaking channels. Uh, right now in terms of the views that he gets. So uh, I think that if right. you're a really good pro player, I think that you have a huge leg up on terms of content creation because the appetite is there for people to watch that type of content. Right. Now that I say that question out loud, I do <laughs> get the idea that you did. But what I actually meant from it was like that there's many different niches and many different channels and people cover different kinds of content on the game. Like I kind of meant like what are you most interested in? Like there's tournaments there's like pro players uh, and stuff you. like that yeah well, that's kind of how i meant the direction of the question oh uh, it's cool yeah i think i'm more most interested in like the competitive players of which i'm not but i, I like kind of following them in the more competitive scene in clash royale but i don't think that that's necessarily the going to be like the big direction for content creators i think it just depends on the individual what they like what, you know the little niche that they carve out for themselves you know so uh, there's definitely more, more just entertainment. You know, you're interesting because you have uh, you have a bit of both. You're very entertaining, and you also have like good decks and strategies. So uh, there's like hybrid people like you too. You know, so I think there's like Thank there's you. all types there's all types of different content out there. Uh, it just depends on you know everything from chest openings to to deck strategy. Yeah. Uh, there's 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 a lot of people interested in a lot of different things. So it, it, yeah. I don't think that I don't see things shifting uh, in one specific direction. You know. Right. Do you see like a change coming with this football, um, the new football update? Do you think that there could be channels based purely off this football? Is there a wide range of like entertainment based on that? I don't know right now because it's only temporary. So like it, right. if you see right now that it ends in 22 days. So I thought about creating a league, uh, or at least funding a league and have someone else create it <laughs> and do all the right. legwork uh, for touchdown mode. But then like it's hard to plan anything long term when you don't know how long it's going to be gone for before it comes back again. I think just like every new game mode, they they don't want to institute it forever in the game right away. They want to just uh, put it in there, make some tweaks if necessary, take it out, uh, whatever. So it's hard to say that this will be like a, a great new uh, long-term format. However, I do think that it's it's really fun. Uh, are you a fan of it? Yes, it is. I am a big fan yes. of it. It's like refreshing. That's the word yeah, for it, refreshing. Yeah, it's, it's different, and it's like a change of pace. And, uh, you know, I can't... I don't see, unless it goes 1v1, I don't see it being like a huge competitive mode, really, you know? Because there's the, the, the format, yeah. it's just, I mean, it's, it's so easy, right? You could just model it after uh, either soccer leagues in Europe, or you could model it after like the NFL in America, where there's just, you know, 20 different teams, 20, 30, whatever different teams of two or three players uh, having like a substitute. It could be best of three where every player has to play once. And it'd be like a really fun tournament and a really fun season to track them. However, I just right. don't think the, you know, as far as just the, the mechanics and the pathing, it seems a lot right now still a, a bit luck-based, maybe, you know? Yes, and, definitely. And, you know, who, and who drafts the hog, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I had a couple of teammates give up you, the hog yesterday. Yeah. Wow. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> Isn't that a cool feeling when someone hands you the hog? You're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had that happen, um, too. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of tweaks that need to be made. Like yesterday I had a prince get stuck behind a giant skeleton's bomb for like a good couple seconds. It couldn't go around it, but I think I think it's really <laughs> nice. fun to play yeah. and refreshing. Yeah, yeah, I do too. We'll see what the future holds for it. Yep, so this next question was about esports, and we kind of uh, covered that in a previous question. So I'm going to skip over that question. Um, on September 29th, you tweeted about how you'll be the manager of a brand new content creator team called Nova Creative Team. Would you be able to expand a little more on that and give us some behind-the-scenes information? 
Sure, man. Well, you are one of the members, so uh, <laughs> welcome to the club, man. But basically, Thank you. I don't think that I don't think that there's an alliance out there of content creators. It's just something that there's not there's 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 networks who basically rip you off and take all your money and take advantage of up and coming YouTubers. Yes. I would Definitely. I would strongly advise anybody, no matter how sweet the deal seems, to avoid any sort of network deal. Uh, but that aside. There's no organizations of people, of just content creators who just help each other out, answer each other's questions, share each other's content, get social promotion, and just little things like that. And then hopefully, so that's where we are right now. Just uh, people who are on the, people who are in the, the team of content creators have to have a certain level of production. Uh, it just can't be, you know, recording on you know, on their phone with with no overlay or something like that. It has to have a little bit of right. production value. And they have to be yes. uh, a non-toxic person, right? So basically someone who's not involved with Definitely. drama all the time. It, it's okay if you just, if you don't like things. Uh, there's no no issue there. Uh, or if you're critical of the games that you cover, that's, that's not what we're saying. We're saying just, you know, just no being negative to other people, uh, just having a positive environment. So certainly looking at it like a team of content creators and starting starting with, uh, like we talked about earlier in the interview, starting with kind of low aspirations and hopefully it will become something much, much more. Right, exactly. All right, thank you for your insight on that. Um, okay. I've got two questions left for you and they should be pretty short questions, but what did you do before you started YouTube full time? I, I was say. a a mailman, a letter carrier for the United States Post Office for oh, 13 wow. years before YouTube. That's awesome, actually. Yeah, it was all right. I can't talk to someone that's done that. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a job. It was a career. It was tough to actually leave it for YouTube because uh, even though it's, a, it's such a mindless job and, uh, and it was, certainly wasn't satisfying and I felt like I wasn't living up to any of my, you know, quote unquote potential. But at the same time, like I made the best of it and I had an all walking route. So I would just be outside on my own all day. I'd listen to audiobooks every day, podcasts, just kind of enjoying myself. Uh, so I actually really made the job work for me, you know, and, and it was, it was, it was great. It was a great job for me, but, uh, so it was tough walking away from that. But ultimately I got to the point where I couldn't keep doing uh, everything on the content creation side on and the post office just couldn't do it. Right. All right. Um, this is kind of a little bit related to that question. When you were a child, what did you envision yourself doing as a career at this point in your life? <laughs> it's actually kind of a, a, a an interesting answer to this, but so right now I am not to get too personal, but there's no way to say this other than being personal. I'm not a religious person at all. Uh, uh, although I am interested in, you know, the history of theology, but mm. growing up, uh, that was not the case. I was very religious and I wanted to be like a, uh, some sort of a minister or, <laughs> or a priest or something, uh, that's, that's as, cool. as a child. Yeah. Into my like early teens, even I was very, very devout youth. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, since then I've, since then I've strayed, I guess, uh, or I've become cynical. Yep. Uh, or skeptical, but either way, <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, I really wanted to be, uh, I really wanted to be, uh, in some sort of a capacity in the in theology uh, growing up. Right. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. I know you are a very busy guy. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your day on your birthday, and thank you. No Is there anything that you would like to say, any shout-outs or anything? Uh, not at all, man. Just, I just wanted to thank you again for having me. It's, uh, it's always cool to, to chat uh, with, uh, with up and coming content creators such as yourself, but in, in all honesty, without sucking up too much, I really do love your, your enthusiasm <laughs> and your energy and your positivity. That's what initially, you know, uh, led me to reach out to you about the, the, the whole Nova content creator club. So it's just, uh, I just want to say thanks again and keep up the good work, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on the oh. channel. No problem, man. Hope to have you on mine someday. Have an awesome day. All right, guys. Well, I hope you did enjoy that um, call there. That was actually a lot of fun getting to know Ash behind the scenes. I haven't seen too many interviews with him before. So shout out to Ash. Thank you for being on the channel. I'm sure most of you guys know who he is, but I will include his uh, channel link in the description. But that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it a little bit longer. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Daily Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, and Brawl Stars content. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you